Welcome to season two of Rush of Fear podcast, where we chat all things Halloween Horror Nights, Universal Orlando's premier scare event. Tonight for episode 18, we will be continuing our last episode um, where we talked about our house rankings, and we're going to this time talk about our scare zone rankings and also do a little bit more deep diving into the event as far as uh, food and shows go. So let the mayhem begin. What a rush of fear. Hello, everybody. I am Michelle, your host for today. And with me, I have Maddie. Hello, hello, hello. And Kenneth. Welcome. <laughs> I don't know. I'm, I'm, that was I'm, ominous. <laughs> I'm trying. Right now, I'm actively fighting a nap. So, <laughs> Aww. well, you're, you're either actively fighting sleep because we're recording super late at night or, or actively fighting a nap. Yeah. yeah. Because we're recording at noon. That <laughs> day. That is our life, guys. <laughs> that is our life. However, Maddie and Kenneth are a lot younger than me. They should have more energy than me. Just saying. <laughs> uh, sometimes. Sometimes. Yeah. Not all the time. Heard. You guys are are really busy people. So got it. <laughs> All right. Well, as I said before, we're going to now pick up where we left off and start talking about um, the scare zones at HHN this year, as well as our rankings and then merch, food, all the other fun stuff. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Yeah. So let's just walk into the park from the entrance and hit the first scare zone we come to. Which, Kenneth, which one would that be? The Horrors of Halloween. Whoop, whoop. Mm-hmm. Tell us uh, about it. <laughs> tell us about it? Okay, well, first, it, we are greeted by the Pumpkin Lord, our master of ceremonies, probably, I would say, for the event this year. Mm-hmm. Uh, and so he was really cool, sitting in his pumpkin throne. And then behind him, we had that great Horror Nights canopy with a million jack-o'-lanterns hanging from it, including everyone's favorite Lil Boo, and a few scare actors from the various scare zones and Horror Nights past wandering around. Um, I never felt like there were that many, maybe like five or six people walking right. around. Mm-hmm. Um, but yeah, pretty a simple. Of, a lot of stilt walkers. Yeah. Oh, and we had these uh, like totems uh symb- symbolic like things representing the different scare zones so you had one with witch stuff you had one with scarecrow stuff one with candy stuff and one with like i don't know what the graveyard stuff would be but there yeah all the other all the, the scare zones were stuff. represented here <laughs> mm-hmm. yeah <laughs> yeah and it it seemed well it didn't seem there was at least one to two scare actors from each one of the zones so you had like one of the trick or treaters from sweet revenge you had one of the demons from conjure the dark uh you had a kind of skeleton reminiscent from the graveyard deadly unrest and then you had one of the scarecrow stilt walkers from uh cursed soil as well so it was just a little representation of everybody yeah yeah Yeah. this was a really cool scare zone to me i mean it wasn't like one that i spent a lot of time in as far as just watching goes or expecting to get scares but i really loved the pumpkin lord he was super cool yeah, I I was actually talking to one of my character friends who was in this zone yesterday about kind of the vibe this year and just how busy it was. We talked about it a little bit in our episode last week with like the houses and the wait times and the queuing and all of that. But for this episode in particular for the scare zones, the zones were busy. The zones were, were busy. Like I I don't know if they oversold or if just because we lost a show or people weren't waiting in the house lines, which they must have because those wait times are high. But yeah. every time I went into a zone, and in particular this one, obviously, like this one is the hardest because it is the front of the park and herd mentality, everyone just moves forward instead of going to the side down Hollywood. 
But like this zone was busy. As someone who does like scare zone photography, I did not spend a lot of time in this zone because the only place to stand where I wasn't getting trampled was the sidewalk. Um, so it was busy. Like it was mm-hmm. hard to just stand there and enjoy watching people get scared or watching the scare actors like do their thing or even watch the pumpkin Lord, unless you were all the way back against the wall of the studio store, because there was yep. just so, so many people stopping and taking pictures. Well, there was and- also an entrance to a house right there. Next to there, Minions. True. There was, yeah. That, I, I don't know where they could have put another house instead of right there, but woof, yeah. Sometimes that house was real hard to get to. Yeah, it was It was definitely a high traffic area, but beautiful. I, yeah. I, anytime they put those pumpkins up in the trees, I love it. It's just it's just gorgeous. So Absolutely. And this zone was very dark as well. Very, very, very dark zone. Um, darker than normal, I think, up in that front area. Am I wrong? I don't uh, know. Yeah, what it was it last pretty dark year? to me, but I think that was because they had to keep it dark in order to light up the pumpkins. Oh, that's that fair. would be my concept. That's my, fair. Could be. Not concept, but my <laughs> whatever. <laughs> you yeah. know what I'm saying? Your theory. Yes, I was theory. just, I'm so used to the Anarcade. I guess up there. Oh, true. Yeah. yeah. But even last year, I guess the fire is what really illuminated a lot last year. Um, oh yeah. But yeah. And this, this zone, like, you know, I feel like we say it every year. It's just hard to spend any time in that entryway zone. Like it feels like it's not really meant to be somewhere that you spend time. Like you walk in, you pass through it, you kind of get a little taste of like, it's like your appetizer, you know, you're like, okay, we're here. It's horror nights. We might get a little bit of a scare, but we're like, we're kind of soaking in the, the vibe yeah. quickly before we move on to like the real stuff. It that felt shorter to me this year. Haven't they usually like expanded that zone out to where it at least goes to Rip Ride Rocket? Not to, me, it didn't, to me, it didn't feel like it was that long. Like it felt like it was once you got under that archway, it was pretty much almost done. And well, so it, it normally congested. It normally doesn't start out so far. Yeah, that's true too. Oh, yeah, yeah, because normally it starts kind of right at the entrance of Minions, and then back to finish at the like the corner on the other side of the street. But this year, with the Pumpkin Lord being so far out, so that he could be a part of the opening ceremony, I think they just kind of shifted everything up a little bit. Gotcha. I just wish that they would expand that whole zone out. All like all the way down the the road, just about <laughs> Jimmy Fallon. Like it's a huge area, so why maybe not without use the without space? the construction? I think the construction really hindered that whole walkway this year. The construction Probably. of the the Universal oh, Monsters yeah. Cafe, because Mo- that also Cafe and Shrek and Shrek. Yeah, so sad. Um, so 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 sad. Yeah. But. Yeah. I mean, cute zone overall. It's your, it's your normal entryway, you know, like you said, kind of taste of, taste of the event, but this time with the pumpkin Lord, I did. I thought that was a really cool addition, like to bring something back that everyone loved so much from last year. So quickly into the next year, I thought was very, very fun. And he got to talk to us and he had fire and that was, it was pretty neat. It was. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, it. It was awesome. So we will save our rankings until we've walked the park. Cool. Yeah. Right. All right. So moving on past Jimmy Fallon turning right towards Mummy, we come to Sweet Revenge, which was a really awesome scare zone to me that I had no idea what to expect on my hype list, um, but it turned out to be awesome in so many ways. So it... First of all, aesthetically, it was gorgeous. Like the the trees all lit up in the park, mm-hmm. and all of the 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 lights and the decorations on the light poles, so cool. Um, larger than life, like float that they did not have to invest money in to create, but they're mm-hmm. huge and they're just props. Um, and then like all the cool little stations, I guess I could call it, along the the side with like the heads and the jars, the candy jars, and which was a cool photo op. Um, and then just the characters walking around were all uh, not like 
not scary trick or treaters, but like old school creepy trick or treaters, right? With like the weird old like masks. Um, it was just a cool scare zone. I yeah. loved it. Very homemade. It was, you know, 1950s Halloween neighborhood festival turned deadly when the the candy company put something in all the candy that makes the kids kill their parents. Like it was it was just silly, goofy fun, like lots of homemade style, old fashioned costumes. And, you know, plenty of times I watched like some of the trick or treating kids like chase around like two or three of the parents and everyone was just playing into it. And I thought it was just so fun. And the music was super good. Like good. it was so cute. And it tied into the tribute store, which I thought was awesome. Like that tribute store facade matched perfectly with this zone itself. And it was just so, it was so cute. Very, very well done. All the actors did a great job bringing it to life in the best way possible. And all around a good time. I loved yeah. it. It was so cool when we first, the first time I walked through it, it was daytime on our RIP tour. And in the daytime, I was like, oh, okay, this is all right. And then we went back around, Maddie and I went back around during our break time. And I was like, let's just take the long way and go through Sweet Revenge again. And that was the first time I'd seen it all lit up. And I was like, oh my God, this is gorgeous. Mm-hmm. So pretty. Yeah. It was like a little party in there. I will yeah. say like it, it felt the closest to like what Vamp 55 was since then. Like even Vamp 85 didn't feel like what Vamp 55 was, but this one kind of felt like that. Yeah. Um, the music helped a lot for sure, but just kind of like people walking around, kind of making up their own stories within the larger story. Um, lots of room for the characters to, you know, make up their own characters and, you know, really just make it their own. And I love that kind of thing. Yeah, it Um, was so fun. The grandma and grandpa scare actors definitely, like, took the cake on just never breaking character. They were so funny. I don't know if you guys got to see them. I didn't. No, I don't remember that. They were hilarious. Grandma was on one set and grandpa was on the other set, but somehow they had like made their characters connect and they were just so funny. Like grandpa, they would walk around so slow. Like it was just really cute. I really Mm -hmm. liked it. It was fun. Were they like, were they like looking for each other? I wonder, or or Um, were they kind of like. That I never stayed around long enough to to get, <laughs> but like there was no grandpa to the grandma on that set, and there was no grandma to the grandpa on that set. So potentially that would have been funny if they were like looking for each other, but obviously <laughs> like they can't find each other because they're not out at the same time. But That's yeah. funny. It That's was what, very, if I was cute. that if I was playing a grandpa and the other cast had a grandma, I would have been like, Have you seen my wife? <laughs> <laughs> I'm worried about her. (laughs) So cute. (laughs) And they had the kids on tricycles and they had the one girl carrying the wagon. Like, so fun. It was. Oh, and the wagon, the kid in the wagon was the uh, Charlie from the Trick or Treat Scare Zone. Yes. The one, yeah. Oh, I didn't even realize that. Yeah, the one who was throwing up all the time. Yeah. Yeah. That was was it was good. It was cute. I liked That's, it. Yeah, that was a, a cool scare zone. It it highly exceeded my expectations. Oh yeah. Hmm. Awesome. All right, moving on down the down the road. What do we come to next, Maddie? Conjure the dark. Conjure the dark. Yeah. Very this mixed was... reviews amongst amongst the others over at UUOP. Really mixed reviews. Really? Well. Mixed reviews, meaning my opinion was very different than the other three. <laughs> okay. Goodness gracious. I I loved this zone. This is where I ended the event. I stayed oh. in this zone for the last, um, the last set of each one of the casts. So it was great. I I didn't spend as much time in it in the beginning of the event, but then there was one night where I I was struggling with my camera and I just stayed longer in that area than I planned to. And it was so fun. And then after that, I was like, this is, this is great. And I just kept going back and going back, but I thought it was fantastic. The, 
the costume design and the storyline and the makeup and the prosthetics, I mean, I've never, I, I've only been going for five years, but in my five years, I've never seen a scare zone with that much work put into it. Like those makeup people in the back were, were they were working on full drive, you know, four wheel drive all the way in. It, it was incredible. Yeah. I, their, I like, their, their makeup was awesome, which was one of the reasons I really liked this scare zone. Yeah. It was crazy. And the sorceress, you know, she was up on stage the entire time during her set. There was no breaks for her. She couldn't go, you know, take a, take a snooze in a boo hole real fast. So she <laughs> was also on full drive the entire time as well. Mm-hmm. Um, I thought it was fantastic. So much fun. I only saw it a handful of times, but we did stop and actually watch, like purposely watch the whole the whole show. Yeah. Um, and and I liked it. I thought the sorceress was really cool and engaging. And then when all of her demon people kind of gathered in the front and then came rushing out back into the crowd was very cool. Um, and like you said, the the makeup was so intricate. It was yeah. And like the lighting package on that in that zone was really pretty. Yes, absolutely. UUOP hosts, the other three, did not like this zone whatsoever. Why? That's so sad. Yep, they it, hated it. It's weird it. to be like that because, like, I didn't love it, but I liked like a lot of the masks a lot. Uh, There's one mask that was like covered in eyeballs. I think like it was really, really weird looking and gross, yeah. and I loved that. Um, the music in this zone was, you know, pumping and like getting me all riled up. Uh, <laughs> cause this, this is what like old Hornets felt like was that zone. Um, and the music in there, it was like that, it, it, it kind of felt like metal with like fiddles and like, <laughs> I love that, you know, <laughs> metal with fiddles, metal with fiddles. It's a new genre. Love it was it. there in the zone. It was like, I, it was like Celtic metal. Um, that's, and- that's fair. That's fair. <laughs> And the boo holes were good. Like some of those scares were good. I just something about, I don't know. It, I never felt like I wanted to hang around very long in that zone. I would stay and watch a couple of the things. I only got to see the like virgin sacrifice once. Um, and we actually had to like, I was with a friend who knew someone who worked in the zone. He was like, do they ever kill that girl? And he was like, uh, let me make that happen. <laughs> so we watched, oh. <laughs> <laughs> we watched that happen and that was pretty cool, but yeah, it was good. I liked all the set pieces. I liked all the costumes. Um, it just felt like there wasn't enough going on in there for me, but you know, what was there was good. That's fair. Yeah. I liked how they opened it up. Usually that scare zone is very claustrophobic, yeah, but they moved that's the stage true. back and it was, it worked much better. Yeah, it was definitely the least congested San Fran scare zone that I can remember. Yeah. It really was, yeah. They made a great decision with that. Yeah. So, I liked so, it. So, yeah. I liked it, too. Yay! Well, well good. All right, so <laughs> now we go all the way around the lagoon, and Kenneth, what do we come to next? Now we get Scarecrow Cursed Soil in Central Park. And this is a sequel in ways to the Scarecrow, the Reaping Haunted House that we had in 2017. Mm -hmm. Uh, And I think it lives up to that name of the of the original house. I thought this zone was awesome. Excuse Marty in the back. He's starved for attention. Oh, my goodness. Um, Yeah. Um, yeah, I loved this zone. Uh, the music was cool. Uh, that like, like country, almost like deliverance vibe that I feel like it gave. Mm -hmm. Uh, and I feel like that just that claustrophobic environment of Central Park definitely works to kind of help recreate what that house felt like, which was also a very claustrophobic house. Uh, yeah, I really liked this zone. And uh, that barn was was pretty cool. That barn was amazing. I remember before Scare Zones got announced, but they were obviously building things in the park. I I kept going, and they hadn't added anything. They had just added like they had put up the framework, and I was like, "What is this going to be?" Like I I have no 
inkling of what could possibly be going on. And then they built the barn and I was like, oh, cool, a barn. Like you're going to get to, you know, walk through something and like something will be covering you. Um, but they put scare actors up there and they added the car and the decorations to the front of the barn. It was so cool. Oh, and there cool. was the, the outhouse and like the one little, I don't know if it was an outhouse or if it was just like a thing with a fence on it. That was like one of the lattice fences like they had in, uh, yes. in Wicked Growth last year. That yeah. was all, just, you know, equally effective in the zone as it was in the house. Yes. With the rubber bands and this character popping out. I loved yeah. it. I thought it was a great zone. Um, I, I mean, there's nothing they can do about it because it's just a crowded event, but I wish that this zone wasn't so small. Um, because, the scare actors, they obviously have to like stay on the sides or like be brave and stand in the middle of that sidewalk yeah. as people walk through them. But yeah. I would love to see this zone fleshed out into like Hollywood Boulevard or even New York. I think that would be pretty cool. Um, and just have the grandiose of the zone, which I think it gave, but in a, in a space that actually fit kind of the idea of it. Um, the crow, the crow scare actors were great. The corn scare actors were great. I felt so bad for them because I'm sure for the entire event, they just heard people saying that corn TikTok audio, which woof, I felt so bad. (laughs) (laughs) Um, but it was, it was a very, very, very cool zone. I liked it a lot. It was a cool zone. It wasn't, it wasn't my favorite. That was that has ever been in that central park area. Usually the central park area is my favorite zone, especially since they started the whole pumpkin stuff in the trees. Um, Mm. So maybe it was just me missing that aspect of it. Like it's usually very lit up and gorgeous. And obviously that's something I like because I talk about it a lot. (laughs) (laughs) Um, But I wasn't like, I wasn't. So apparently when a bunch of people went through this, it was very foggy. The times that I went through it there, it wasn't very foggy at all. So I guess that would have been super cool if it had been as foggy as I've heard. It was, it was very foggy. Yeah. It was never yeah. foggy when yeah. I went through it. <clears throat> um, Even during the daytime, they were, they were pumping that fog. They, right at the front behind the car, they had two fog machines, one pointed outwards and then one pointed back into the barn, but they would go off at the same time. So you would like walk past the car into a cloud and the cloud would continue until you got out from the barn and you were like, oh my God. (laughs) Oh, that would have been cool. Yeah. Um, No, I did not experience that. And I I wasn't really, I was like, why are those characters up there? Because they weren't really, you couldn't see them. Like it was so dark and they didn't have any kind of lighting on them whatsoever. And I was like, I... What, I don't even. I can't even tell what you are. Like you're not. You're def, You're obviously not scary because I can't even really see you. So those scare <laughs> actors felt like weird to me, um, and underutilized. And then, but the one that I loved was the scarecrow. As you're walking out next to Cafe La Bamba, the scarecrow that looked like it was just hanging on the fence right there. <gasps> yeah, you couldn't tell if it was a real person or not. And so, you know, people would get up super close to it to, like, take pictures, and then it would just move, and it was a person. It, that was a cool scare. Yeah, that one was really, really, really cool. Yeah. I liked that one a lot. Yeah. Um, as far as the scare actors on top of the barn, I do agree. I wish they had a little bit more light on them. That was my one my one gripe across all the scare zones was just lighting this year. Um, Sweet Revenge was obviously very lit up because of the – Oh, yeah the like lights of the festival, but all the other scare zones were very, very dark. Conjure the dark. There was a very blue purple light on the stage, which like for photography's sake, not the best, but at least that had a little bit of light, but the, the rest of the zone was pitch black. I mean, you, you could not see the cart with the decorations on the back against the water. Like, um, Horrors of Halloween, a very dark zone as well. Graveyard, very dark. This one really had no lighting Mm -hmm. in it whatsoever, which is neat as a guest from a scare actor perspective, though. It seems a little terrifying. I wish it was terrifying, but it it wasn't to me. Like, it needed a little 
No, oh, I'm saying okay. like from a scare actor perspective of being oh, in yeah. a pitch black zone, gotcha. no one yeah. knows if you, cause it's pitch black, but it's also foggy. So people are just kind of going through and like, it's, to me, it would seem as though there'd be a lot of injuries that happened in that right. zone. Um, guest and scare actor wise, I guess I, I tripped a couple of times, but, um, yeah, the only, the, if you are looking at the barn, the scare actor up on top of the risers on the right-hand side had a trigger, but the one on the other side did not. Um, so they did their best trying to like swipe down and like go right. with the trigger. But yeah, I, I will say if they had had a little bit of light on them, they would have had um, like, it would have been a lot better. Um, right. But I do think it was cool that they were at least up there. That was neat. Yeah. Yeah. It was like a like a bonus Easter egg for anyone who decided to look up. Right. Because <laughs> I mean, yeah, I, Michelle is right. Like, there was nothing really like drawing your attention uh-huh. up there, mm-hmm. but they were up there, and that's they cool. Were, they were up there. <laughs> I think one of them was like a coyote guy, a coyote boy, and then I think the other one was I think like a rat or a weasel. See, you couldn't even tell. Guy. That's yeah, right. like you don't even know what they were. <laughs> right. The crow costume, though, was super cool. Like, if I was a scare actor, I would have loved to have been in that crow costume with the beak and the fingers and the 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 cloak that had all the feathers on it. It was really neat looking. Now, listen, how cool would it have been for them to have run, like, a, a zip line across the two platforms up there <laughs> and had a crow that all of a sudden opens its wings and, like, flies above you? Ka-ka! Yeah. Dude, now that would have been awesome. Path of the Wicked style, flying monkeys. Oh, oh my God. If only. Can I you would imagine like all of a sudden it just <sighs> lighting up and and it flies over you. Oh, yes. I would See, pay they good need money. To talk to us before they design these things. <laughs> Damn it. <laughs> <laughs> anyway. Oh, my gosh. Goodness all right. Gracious. So, last but very much so not least. We Mm -hmm. come to Hollywood, which is where we find Graveyard Deadly Unrest. Oh, yeah. So giant graveyard, ghosts coming out of the graves, walking around in various forms. Um, The two, Maddie, you can explain this better because you explained it to me, but the two brother, what were they up there on the stage? What were they considered? Angels? Mm -hmm. I don't know what they were. Con- I know one of them was Brother Death and one of them was Brother Sleep. Yeah. Yeah. They were gorgeous when they opened up their wings. That was very cool. Yeah. Um, I was a little confused at first because I was like, why are there people walking around in suits? It's like, that's, yeah. not, that's, that's not very scary to me. <laughs> then she was like, Michelle, they're dead. Like, they yeah. just came out of their coffin. So that's what they were buried in. I was like, oh, okay. <laughs> I think from what I can deduce, they were like the wanderers. Like, they, it's not, it's not the afterlife, but it's like, they're, and not purgatory, but they're just kind of like stuck. Right? Kind of tell me if I'm wrong. But are you talking about death and sleep? No, the, like the people walking around. The people oh, walking I have no around. Idea. Oh, okay. <laughs> I mean, if we're in a if we're in a graveyard, then they were buried. But I don't know if yeah, whatever. So yeah, they're, they're spirits <laughs> in a graveyard. Yeah. Um, the statue was very cool. The I loved the ghost scare actor that had like the ghost thing on top of his head with the glowing yeah. eyes. Yeah. The, the little so skeleton cute. backpack. Guy. Yeah, yeah, that was cool. <laughs> And they I spent a good so bit fun. of time watching the twins to interact. Oh, yeah. The twins were crazy. Uh, the statue is like my favorite thing at Horror Nights. What else? What else? I don't know. Oh, there was like a ghillie suit up against one of the crypts. Uh, yeah. Uh, there's just so much cool stuff in this zone. Um, the music was very haunting mm-hmm. and like creepy and slow. Yeah, very atmospheric zone. I think a lot of times Hollywood goes for a more chaotic energy, and this one was was a, a more like eerie, creepy uh, vibe that I really appreciated, and I think worked really well. Yeah, I definitely agree. It it was, I mean, it was gorgeous. Even from the setup before things had been announced, um, I knew that this one was going to be 
something very, very special. And it, it turned out to be very, very special. It, I'm, I'm going to sound like Stefan again from SNL, but it had everything. <laughs> <laughs> it had people up on the stage and they had a trigger that was just, it was very ominous and like, you know, overwhelming and halfway through the, the run, the scare actors, whenever they would do the trigger, like brother in sleep, death and sleep. Um, some of the scare actors would come up and they would stand in front of him with their arms out. And then at a certain point in their speech, they would like turn around and run into the crowd, which is always, that's always so cool. Like when the scare actors, you know, start doing these things just for fun, but then they become kind of tradition for them. And it's scary for us. Like, it's just, it's so cool. <laughs> Bro- da- the two brothers, their costumes were unbelievable unbelievable yeah. like the wings and the one had the is it a sif a scythe the stick with the the curved knife yeah i think that's a scythe um the other one had a big sword and i liked the twins unbelievable i hope that they got you know bonus upon bonus because <laughs> how they managed to constantly know what the other one was going to do like i don't know if they planned it i don't know if they rehearsed it but they were always on the top of their game it was so cool it was. the statue scare was incredible um we need more statue scares in horror nights i just think that is such a cool um such a cool kind of it's so simple it's so simple but it's so effective. Yeah. Um, and yeah, the ghillie suit men and the backpack skeleton guys, it was just, it was so fun. It was such a fun zone. And that was one, it was not usually that busy, which was very, very nice. And th- it was nice to just kind of stand there and watch everything going on because all the scare actors were doing something every single moment that you were in there. It was fantastic. I loved it. Yeah. Yeah, it wasn't one, it wasn't a zone where like you would see performers tiring themselves out because they're all moving more slowly for the mm-hmm. most part. Um, so they could like move more because they're moving less right. in a weird way, you know? But yeah, That's loved that goal. zone. Loved it. So and cool. like we said last time for uh, Legends Collide, uh, not that it really, you know, ha- has anything to do with guest reaction, but this also did weigh in Scare Zone of the Year. Mm-hmm. Props oh, to them. Cool. Yeah. Yay. Awesome. Well, while you're going, here. Kenneth, why don't you give us your ranking? Oh, okay. So I actually, my uh, Scare Zone hype list is almost exactly the same as my um, final rankings. Oh, wow. Nice. So I think the only ones that swapped were number two and three. But... Uh, For number five, I have Conjure the Dark. Again, didn't dislike it, but I think that it, uh, I don't know. I just never felt like wanting to spend any time there. Number four, Horrors of Halloween. Um, I think the Pumpkin Lord is really what put this one over Conjure the Dark. Uh, Number three, Sweet Revenge. Number two, Scarecrow, Cursed Soil. And number one, I have Graveyard, Deadly Unrest. And Maddie, what do you have? Um, my hype list changed a lot. I started with Scarecrow being five, Sweet Revenge four, Conjure three, Graveyard two, and Horrors of Halloween one. And I ended up with Horrors of Halloween five, Scarecrow four, Graveyard three, Sweet Revenge two, and Conjure the Dark one. Wow. Yeah, it changed up a lot. Mine is actually very similar to yours, both in hype and in my final. Um... So my number five is Scarecrow. My number four is Horrors of Halloween. Three, Graveyard, Deadly Unrest. Two, Conjure the Dark. And one, Sweet Revenge. So on my hype list, I had Sweet Revenge at number five. And it actually mm. ended up taking my number one. So, nice. Yeah. Good Very stuff. Good. Yeah. Yay! Yay. Yay. Scare, Scare zones. zones. Yeah. yeah. So, all right. Well, let's... Talk about Nightmare Fuel Wildfire. I only saw it one time, and as Maddie just told me, so did she. <laughs> Even though she went oh. to every night of the event. Yeah. Um, so, I think I saw it three, three, four times. Oh. Maybe three. Yeah. Nice. Nice. So for those of you who saw 
uh, Nightmare Fuel last year, it was similar. There were some similar aspects, but I wouldn't say it was exactly the same. And definitely the addition of the actual Fuel Girls, because last year they weren't able to come over because of COVID. Um, so having that actual group here really, to, in my opinion, stepped things up a huge notch. Um, they were so good. So, so, so good. And it really did keep my attention the whole time, even though I knew the storyline. Some of the tricks were different, and we I still can't figure out how they do it. Um, <laughs> like, Krista recorded part of it. I don't know if she's allowed to do that or not, but she did. And we keep <laughs> rewinding the video over and over again in, like, slow-mo, and we still can't figure out how they did it. Um, but I, I enjoyed it. I for sure enjoyed it. Maddie, why did you only choose to see it once? Um, I, so I saw it as part of media just so that we had seen everything, um, with Chris and I, I mean, I only saw nightmare fuel last year, I think a total of three times I saw it on opening night or the second night with Kenneth. And then I saw it again with Lee and Tracy and I think that was it. I only really saw it twice. I just, I'm still so burnt out from my time watching Academy of Villains. And I don't, I don't like the mosh pit style of waiting to go in. Um, if it was like an actual queue, that would be one thing. But the whole mosh pit and everyone kind of sprinting to go get seats and I, I don't know. The storyline is great. To me, the storyline was the exact same as last year. Uh, they just had a couple of switches, like you said, Michelle. Um, but a lot of the dances, like the dance was the same for most of them. The songs were the same for a majority of them. They did a great job. Like all those dancers are fantastic. The fugors are fantastic. I just, I don't feel as though my time is worth waiting 30, 40 minutes to go see another 20, 30 minute show and then be packed like sardines to then leave. But that's, that is just me personally. I think the show was great. I just did not want to go see it. Understood. <laughs> How about yeah. you, Kenneth? What did you think? Um, uh, Nightmare Fuel, I think this year was, uh, you're right. It wasn't exactly the same. I think before I saw it, People were telling me, oh, it's exactly the same show as last year. And it's not. Uh, the opening magic trick was the same. The overall storyline, I guess, is the same, if you can call it a storyline. Um, and the finale was like the same idea with a different magic trick. Right. Uh, but, and then all of the numbers in the middle were different. I felt that they were a downgrade from the last year's show. Um, maybe a lot of that has to do with the music choices. Um, I felt the music choices were weaker than last year's. Uh, I liked last year's soundtrack a lot better. Um, and I think because of that, I felt the show was better last year, but I mean, it was still fun. I liked the guy in the hula hoop doing like rolling around. That was cool. Um, but yeah, know, overall, I so like, much anxiety waiting for him to chop his finger off. <laughs> oh my god! Uh, overall, like it was fine. You know, I I saw last year's show a lot more because it was like exciting and new. And this year, I only saw it every time I was with somebody who had never seen it. Um, and so I'd be like, "Oh, you haven't seen it? All right, I, yeah, let's watch it then." But like, it was never my necessarily like in like I never I never wanted to really go watch it again. I just thought it was all right. Fair enough. Yeah. I kind of felt that way about the shows in general this year, to be yeah, honest. Yeah, I don't know that I would have purposely gone to see it again either. Like I would have Academy of Villains. Yeah. Yeah. And unfortunately, I did not get to see the Lagoon show Ghoulish. Ghoulish. Oh, Ghoulish. Yeah, see, I thought Ghoulish was okay. <laughs> you guys are going to have to take the lead on that one because it was damaged by the hurricane by the time I got there. Yeah. Yeah. I I really enjoyed it. It was obviously not the original Marathon of Mayhem, which we all know is the best yeah. thing that has ever happened ever. Yeah. Um, but I personally liked this Lagoon show more than last year's Lagoon show. Um, I thought that the... See, for me, the vibe this year for 
the scare zones all connected. They connected together in the storyline of like Halloween, it's our 31st year, which then connected into the tribute store, which also connected to the first part of the ghoulish show, um, kind of before we got into like the weekend section of it. But I thought it was so cute. It was very vintagey Halloween. I was a big like book reader as a kid. So the whole like, okay, follow along with the story that's, you know, talking to you on the tape and then switch the tape when you hear this sound to part two. Like that to me was super, super fun. And the vintagey feeling of Halloween was awesome. I love that they brought in the weekend to part of it because that's kind of what we wanted when we were talking about it originally. Um, yeah. I, th- I thought it was a great time. I only saw it twice, once on opening night and then that other time for your first time, Kenneth. Yeah. Um, but yeah, unfortunately, like Michelle said, it was damaged by the hurricane. So it did not come back, uh, sadly enough. But I thought it was very, very cute. A good time. It. I also enjoyed all the vintage vibe of it. Like the, the, the record and storybook follow along thing was cool. Um, definitely had a big smile on my face the first time I saw it and like saw that that's kind of what they were doing. Um, uh, it, it just felt to me a little like, like they tried to make the biggest show they could using like license free, uh, like generic Halloween f- visuals. Um, which they did a good job of, but it's not necessarily what I would have wanted necessarily. Uh, I really hated the skeletons in the closet part. I really didn't like Why? anything about that. I thought the 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 video on that part looked really cheap and stupid. Of like <laughs> just like three people in like spirit like Walmart Halloween skeleton costumes uh, dancing in front of like a black wall. Uh, like I don't know something about that just like I was like this feels really cheap and I didn't like the song I also didn't like the song um on that section at all Goodness. Uh, (laughs) but the rest of it I thought was like cute fun I wasn't mad about it um you know it wasn't as disappointing to me as yeah like like last year's Marathon of Mayhem Carnage Factory was the first time I saw it and that eventually did grow on me to where I did like it a good deal this one, I didn't get to watch it enough times to where it was able to kind of grow in that way. So it, it kind of started in like a meh area and it ended just above meh. You know, like <laughs> I was like, it's it's okay. It's fun. Like I'll keep watching it because it's easy to get into, you know. And like you can go get some food and drinks and like go get a spot and just watch this thing for a little bit while you're, you know you know, waiting for the next thing to do, I right. guess. But like, I don't know, it was okay. Like the shows were really underwhelming to me this year. Um, and overall, I think my least favorite part of the event this year. All right. Fair enough. Fair enough. Fair enough. So I'm not sure how I feel about the fact that I didn't see it. <laughs> <laughs> it was worth seeing for sure. But like, I don't know. It was, it was fine. <laughs> you awesome. can watch it on YouTube. Yes. Yes. Yeah. All right. Um, So that's the shows. Now let's talk food. Uh, (laughs) Overall, we're of course we're not going to go through every item like we have in past episodes. But like, what did you guys think about the food offerings overall for this year's event? I thought they were quite delicious. Everything that I tried, I enjoyed. I think there was only like one thing that I only had once because it was just underwhelming at that point. But everything else that I had was fairly delicious. I think my top three were the Little Boo Bow... No, not the Little Boo one. The Spicy Turkey and Butternut Squash Bow Bun, the Tombstone Cake Pop, and the Reuben Fries. Those were my top three. Oh, Ooh. I never got to try the Reuben Fries. Oh. I, when my girlfriend was here, I was like, what do you, uh, what do you want to eat for food? She was like, I don't know. What do you, what do you want to eat? And I was like, perfect. We're going to get Reuben fries. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, I haven't had them yet. And I finally know where they are. Cause someone told me the secret. So if you like them, great. If you don't more for me, let's go. <laughs> <laughs> um, I feel like the food was like the star of this year's event to me. I loved ev- like Everything. And even if I didn't like the food itself, I just loved that they were doing so much with it. 
yeah. and trying so many different things. Like this is the big takeaway to me of Halloween Horror Nights <laughs> this year was like, we need more of this kind of thing all the time, every year. Yeah. Uh, it was, there was my, a lot. Like it was so yeah. everywhere. I think my top three were the maggot covered cheese dog, the petrified rat tails, and probably, ooh, it's tough for a number three. I mean, the Lil Boo Bao bun, the spicy pumpkin bun was really good. And I mean, the the fried PB&J is just like all-time great food item in the world. Fair. And Lee is wrong I know, I was going to say, Lee thinks it's the nastiest thing I in bought, the world. I Wait, bought one, what? Sp- I bought one specifically so Lee would would try it, and he was like, "I don't like this at all." And I was like, "You can leave now. Yeah, go away." <laughs> he said it just tasted like oil, like just grease. Oh, he got a bad one then because they were no, delicious. he didn't. It was delicious. He got a good one. I tried it. I ate the rest of it. Oh, sad <laughs> face. I haven't listened to that episode yet, so I'm not sure. I'm very behind on all of my podcast listenings. Um, but yeah, it was great. The only. The only qualm, the only nitpick I have for the food this year is the lines. I don't, I don't know what happened. I don't know what happened. Oh, so long. They were very long, but they also were not organized. And I don't know if it's because of how close together some of the food tents were. I'm thinking specifically the ones up in Gramercy Park, but like they were so close and there wasn't enough space for a lot of queue. So then people got confused and it was just, I don't know. I don't know what happened. The food lines were unfortunately very long, Uh, but the food at the booths were so good. And this year I believe there were more beverages to try as well. Cause in years previous, it's just been like the two to three, like, pre-mixed cocktails that are everywhere. But this year, almost every single booth had its own specialty cocktail. Yeah. I think in the past you couldn't get the specialty cocktails at the food tents. Well, also in the past there wasn't as much food. Like I think last year was the first year that like there was this level of food at Halloween Horror Nights. Um, This was... Epcot Food and Wine Festival. It was. Yeah. <laughs> La- they they even had their own lighting packages on these buildings. <laughs> yeah. Last year's HHN was the first one where that was the case. And so I don't remember if that, if the variety of drinks was already there or if it, if that's new for this year. Cause I feel like Mardi Gras this past year was the first time that it was like, oh, each thing has its own drink, you know? Yes. Yes. And so they carried that over to, Horror Nights. Um, I think they did, yeah, because last year it was like the bog slime you could only get at one food tent, but then they had the electric death and something else as like the premix cocktails that you could oh, get. Oh, the poison tea party. Yeah, you could get those everywhere, but each booth this year had their own, and I think that is so fun. Yeah. I wish yeah. that they would somehow be able to implement mobile ordering at the food booths so that there it doesn't cause such big congestion wherever there's a food tent. Yeah, I don't know. How does Epcot do it? They Same have way. two they have two sides of theirs. Mm-hmm. I don't it's, know. Yeah. It's all the same way, just random food booths and long lines. But their yeah. food air, their food booths are more spread out, I think, which yeah. helps. And yeah, you're right. A lot of them have queues on both sides of the thing, which, you know, in the Gramercy Park food area is not possible because they have like four little booths right next to each other. Yeah. Um, so I think it's just a matter of there's so many of them and they're all spread out. So like none of them get that packed. Fair. The only thing I could think of is like, especially in that Gramercy Park area, making one central area to purchase said food, like five cash registers. And then you walk up with your receipt to the specific food booth that you bought your, like a food court style kind of, but yeah, I don't know. I don't know. That area is just funky. Yeah. Either way they need to think it, think it through differently because they do definitely get (laughs) or more registers. (laughs) I mean something, I don't know, but it's, it was a busy event this year. Very, very busy. Um, but yeah, food and drink, 10 out of 10 would recommend. I loved it all. 
Nom, yeah. nom, 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 nom. I didn't get to try a lot of the food booth items. Um, I did, however, do scare actor dining, which ah. was, oh. yeah, which was, it was cool. It wasn't as good as I've had in the past when it was at Monsters Cafe. Um, the food was not that great. I mean, it was, it was dinner, you know, it wasn't anything where I was not going to eat it, but it definitely wasn't like anything to, to write home about. Um, and I was slightly disappointed in the amount of scare actors that were there. So oh, I actually huh. had a lot more scare actor interaction at our, on our RIP tour in Cafe La Bamba than I did at scare mm. actor dining. Interesting. Um, mm. They had like a stationary area set up for Michael Myers. They had a stationary area set up for Legends Collide. I don't know if it was always the mummy or if they rotated characters, but during my dinner, the mummy was there. And then actually walking uh. around the restaurant, there were only, while I was there, there were only three scare actors in the entire hmm. restaurant. And we didn't see any of them come to our table within the first hour, except for one of the, uh, the mask maker. Now my interaction with the mask maker was actually very cool. Um, so if, if you do your research and you know how to interact with them, it can be a cool experience. But then like, I didn't see the other two scare actors at all until we were about to leave. So I don't know. It was just weird. It definitely wasn't scary. Like in the past, I felt like there were always scare actors walking up behind us, trying to scare us, um, you know, peeking over our shoulder, waiting for us to turn around. There were lots of opportunities for random selfies and things like that. And this time there just wasn't. Hmm. So Interesting. It was interesting. Would I do it again? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> because I loved like being able to walk over and hang out with Michael Myers. That was cool. How was the food? Eh, I mean, th so they had like, it was just weird offerings. They, oh. had, they had pizza and then they had like little cups of hummus and carrot and celery sticks and little fruit cups. And they had the little uh, burger slider, like meatball slider thing. They had huh. the hot chicken wings. And then they also had like a roast, like a carving roast roast beef kind of carving station thing as well. Oh. It That's was just so like strange. really weird <laughs> items. And then the dessert, they only offered three little, like they had like a little macaron thing and a gelato and one other ah. thing. I don't remember what, I don't know. It was just weird food. Strange. Yeah. See, when, before the event, uh, a couple of friends of mine wanted to do scare actor dining for someone's birthday, but they have allergies and like one of them's vegan, yada, yada, yada. So I stood in line at guest services once scare actor dining was announced um, to ask them what the menu would be, thinking that they would have an answer, which yeah, it's fine. Um, but they told me that it was just going to be the La Bamba food or no. not La Bamba, uh, the Louis food. So anything that no. was served during the day at Louis would be served during character dining, nope. but just buffet style. Nope. But interesting. Okay. Pizza, pizza. Yes. But pizza, yeah, so that's it. That was it. That's so strange. All right. Well, <laughs> yeah. Um, only vegetarian items would have been like the the hummus, and then they had like a salad. Interesting. That pretty much would have been it. Hmm. Fruit. Mm. Yeah. Well, I don't know. So, but again, I would do it again. I'm, I'll yeah. do it every year that it's that they have it. <laughs> Fair. So. I wonder if it's going to be in Louis again next year, or if it's going to be in whatever takes over Monsters Cafe. I don't want oh, it to yeah. be in Louis. I did not like that setting. It was interesting to have it there. For the sake of stay and scream, because stay and scream in New York was also set up very differently this year than it had been years previous. But the line for scare actor dining kind of wrapped the side of the building by the bathrooms. Um, and then when we tried to get in line for a house that was also over there, the team member was very confused as to why we were walking over because we didn't have tickets to scare actor dining. And I was like, no, the house line starts down there by the bathrooms. And they were like, well, you can't go down there unless you're scare actor dining. And we're like, 
but the house lines back there. So it was just, (laughs) (laughs) it was very strange and like, no, no, we weren't mad about it. We were just like, okay, no worries. Like we will wait off to the side until the line gets up here and we can hop in line. Like it is okay. (laughs) But like, um, it wasn't, there's a line to get in the line now. Right. Yeah. So it just, it felt very in the way, I guess is the only like right way to put it. Yeah, it was it was strange, but it is what it is. It's in the past. <laughs> I didn't like that setting at all. First of all, there's a lot of natural light in that restaurant, and so mm. it didn't add to like the scare feel. Scare actor dining is supposed to, like you're supposed to be a little bit uneasy, right? Like that's right. part of the fun, and it was it. There was nothing uneasy about it. The whole setting, it was way too open, way too airy, way too bright. Interesting. Um, and they just did not have enough scare actors walking around. Interesting. Well, hmm. maybe next year. <laughs> maybe next year. <laughs> maybe All next right. year. Who's to say? Anything else you guys wanted to chat about? Merchandise? Um, oh, yeah. Merchandise. Good merch this year. A very a good merch a and lot. a lot of merchandise. I I mean, once again, I've only been going for five years, but dude, so much merchandise. Every single room in that tribute store had specific merchandise to the theme, and there was so much of it. So much of it, in fact, that it's one still on sale in the parks at 70% off in different yeah. locations. <laughs> wow. Yeah. Like Oh my goodness gracious. It was cute though. And I still can't get rid of it. I know. <laughs> it's from what I've seen, it's a lot of the the screamers that like brand the screamers. So like that yeah. the jean jacket and the plushies and the Frankenstein popcorn buckets and then that button up shirt that had all the screamers on it. Universal's version of the Funko Pop. Um Yeah. Yeah. But it was so cute. I I got more shirts this year than I have ever in my five years of going. Wait, Frankenstein popcorn bucket is bucket is seventy percent off. Uh, I think so. Um, if it is, I might need one. <laughs> okay, <laughs> just man. That seems like a popcorn bucket that should always be available, doesn't it? Like Frankenstein yeah, is not just for Halloween. He's a universal. He's like Jaws, you know. He's like always a, appropriate. And I he was know. really cute too. And he made more sense as a popcorn bucket than any Disney popcorn bucket I've ever seen ever, <laughs> because his head fully opened up, and then it was just a circle, a deep but circle you know, for popcorn. You know what's wrong with the popcorn bucket, though, is the opening should be like you lift off the top of his head instead of the little door on the back. That's where they messed up. Um, you, it, sh- it should open up like you're revealing his brain. That, That's, yes. Yeah, that would have been funny. Yeah. Funny haha. I don't know why they didn't make it that way. Because, again, well, they don't talk to us. <laughs> <laughs> we're just – we're so smart. Um, <laughs> but, yeah, the merchandise was great. The tribute store was super, super cute. Uh, it was cute. Yeah. Yeah. Really enjoyed it. And the All Hallows Eve boutique was so well themed for Halloween this year as well. I, that vintage, that vintage Halloween feel is just so mm, chef's kiss. Yes. <laughs> yeah. And then, Kenneth, do we want to talk about the park wide loop? The music loop. It was an interesting change of pace. I don't know that I loved it. I liked some of the songs on it, but. I felt like I was at Volcano Bay more than Horror Nights, and it was weird. I I agree. I don't like that it had words. I think <laughs> okay because another yes, way. Yes, I have been yeah. singing that for <laughs> since the event ended. I cannot get it out of my head. It's all I think about, and I really loved like in twenty eight when they just had that like overall synth track going and then last year it was just kind of like rock music but with no words I think the words really they it was it was so strange I don't know how to put it but I just didn't it was weird it was weird to walk from an area where it's playing the park wide loop into something like deadly unrest and go from so many words and a chorus to thunderstorm spooky grave noises if that makes sense. 
<laughs> yeah. But you could kind of still hear the din of the chorus going on in the background. I don't know. <laughs> but yeah, I will never get that song out of my head. I honestly it's- did not pay attention one bit to it. Really? <laughs> really. You weren't there long enough. And I guess yeah. I wasn't. <laughs> It was a lot. Another way out is the new Send Me an Angel, which I also didn't recognize that that was a thing. Uh, because Send Me an Angel, that was the year I was in Invasion, so I was just listening to that music all run. So yeah. I, I never heard Send Me an Angel. But, man, Another Way Out is, uh, I think it's going to haunt the, the nightmares of Horror Nights fans forever now. Yeah. There was it's another. A good song. I like the song. Right. There was another one that had a very distinct chorus that I just kept repeating over and over again. Um, <laughs> something with a, uh, I don't think it was a chainsaw. Another way out is the only song I remember. And I remember there was another one that was like very surf rocky. It was like very surf rock, oh, psycho Billy. Sticks um, and stones by the creep show is the other one. Well, and, and the creep show also did another way out. So the creep show is like the new HHN band. Right. Um, oh, and Graveyard uh, Girlfriend. <laughs> I don't know that one. <laughs> I'll send you this playlist that I just found. <laughs> okay. Is it the whole park loop? Yeah, it's the park wide loop. Good. Yeah. I need it. <laughs> Goodness. You need it even though you hated it? <laughs> I didn't hate it. It's just it didn't feel like Horror Nights, but I liked it. Um, uh, yeah, it was It was just a new, a new flavor of Horror Nights park loop music um that i just am not used to yet yeah but i liked the music i just was like this i don't feel like i'm at hhn with this music on yeah yeah it was a lot slower than normal and it didn't it didn't give for like the the 31st year when everything is relating to halloween i wanted more halloweeny spooky there's like a couple specific um like if you on TikTok, if you're making a video and you type in Halloween to the sounds, it brings up just kind of like spooky Halloween music. And there's like six of them that I always hear. And those ones would have been great. It's just kind of like it's it's cute, spooky Halloween-esque music that doesn't have lyrics, but it would put you in the direct proper mood to walk into the horrors of Halloween and then to walk into Sweet Revenge and... Yeah, I don't know. Yeah. yeah to me, there will never be a better park wide loop song than uh, Viper Force, oh. which is the. the yes. That is the best. If you if you're if you're walking around and you hear that song and you don't like go into an air guitar solo, like I don't know how you resist. You know, it's just it's so good. It. 28 had the best music. The the music for the park wide loop, the music for um what was I just oh an arcade. Like it just it was so freaking good. So good. I like yeah. can't even I don't even remember any of the songs from last year's park wide loop. It just didn't really Last year, yeah. Well, it was like metal. It was like um, it was just basic metal, right? I think so. It was just like standard, like yeah. just heavy music. Yeah, it was good. I liked it. Oh, you know? goodness. It's it kind of like it, it should kind of just disappear into the background, right? Like you don't want it to stand out too much unless it's Viper Force. Right. Um, <laughs> and that's what's happening with me. I'm like, I have no idea what you guys are talking about because it literally okay. just blends into the background <laughs> for me. But then again, I don't live in Orlando and get to go. More than a couple times a year. So Fair. Yeah. I have something to do with it. Fair. Yeah. I'm all the way out. <laughs> <laughs> all right. On that note, <laughs> I think that will do it for this episode and for HHN 31, guys. No. The season is it's over. over. It is no. over. We are gearing up for the holidays. We've got our UUOP weekender coming up in a few weeks. Um, so if, if you guys also listen to us over there, then be sure to, to grab your tickets for that um, before the sales close. So mm-hmm. fun stuff. And looking forward to next year. Um, we have a good bit of followers now with Rush of Fear. So who knows? Maybe we'll do some kind of a mini meetup or maybe oh, try yeah. to get together some type of a an RIP tour with 
listeners or who knows? Who knows yeah. what fun stuff we can plan? Yeah. Oh, uh, yeah. we already have our HHN 32 first announcement. It's Chucky. We'll talk about it later. Bada bing, bada oh, boom. Yeah. Oh my God. <laughs> we have to do a whole episode about that now. Yikes. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> we were begging for announcements last year. Now we've already got our first announcement <laughs> for next year. <laughs> too soon. Too soon. Too great. Uh-huh. Awesome. All right, guys. Well, thank you for listening. And we hope to see you soon in... Well, it's not the fog now. What is it going to be? In the... The snow. The snow. <laughs> in, in the fake snow. In Earl um, the Squirrel's bar in City Walk. Yes. Yes, yes. Um, but until next time, maybe next month, who knows, for more content, <laughs> yeah. be sure to check out our Facebook page at facebook.com slash rush of fear and follow us on Instagram and Twitter at rush of fear pod. For more general Universal Orlando resort news, check out our friends and UUOP network hosts over at the unofficial Universal Orlando podcast, wherever podcasts can be found. And for all your travel needs, especially not HHN because it's over, especially Christmas time and the weekender, like we (laughs) talked about, reach out to our host and sponsor Port Key Vacations. Visit Michelle's new website, which is portkeyvacations.com. Just click the link on the port key and submit your no obligation quote request to begin planning your next magical vacation. As always, be sure to check out Kenneth's band Pangolin everywhere you listen to music online and follow them on social media at Pangolin FL. And yes, please. Yes, please. And you can <laughs> find me um, at the UOP TikTok. I have, I am working on new content, guys. I swear to you, it's coming. Um, UUO pod, P O D. So you'll find me there on TikTok creating videos. We're going to say at least once a week. <laughs> yep, yep. Um, and for all of those compliments I get on my socials with Porky Vacations, I have Maddie to thank for that as well because she rocks. So Hi. <laughs> <laughs> awesome. Well, thank you for listening, everyone. The podcast has come to an end. Now get out. Another way out. <laughs> Maddie, you have got to leave that in. Yep, it's staying. (laughs) Okay, good.